and welcome to petrol ped and welcome to the 2018 audi rs4 i've been very lucky to have been driving this car now for the last week i've done not that far off of a thousand miles so i thought you might like to know just how good this car is it's time for another collaboration review roll the titles <laughs> Let's start this review then by taking a look around the outside of the car um, and I think the best place to start is the front. I think the front end of this car is just so right. It's really, it's got that A4 family um, a DNA but it's just so much more aggressive than the previous version. I love the subtle changes in this headlight shape. Just this little kink here is, is absolutely superb and the RS4 has a much meaner front end, much meaner front grille. This car has a black pack on it so these black accents just make the front end of the car stand out a great deal more. So under the bonnet then we've got a 2.9 litre twin turbo V6 petrol engine and that's coupled to Audi's 8-speed Tiptronic gearbox and, and, and I have to say that has impressed me hugely with this car. When Audi went from the twin clutch S-tronic to this single clutch Tiptronic I was a bit dubious but it is, it is a sweet gearbox, changes are very very rapid and then clearly that goes through all four wheels with Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. Um, the performance figures 450 PS, 600 Newton meters of torque, 0 to 60 is 4.1 seconds. Standard car comes with an electronic speed limiter of 155 miles an hour. This has had that taken off, which is a really pricey option. So this will do 174 miles an hour apparently. Um, but yeah, very, very impressive power unit. Um, and it comes with a 60,000 mile through year warranty. So it, you should be putting the high octane fuel in this. So you might well have a little bit more of an expense when it comes to fuel. And we'll have a chat about uh, fuel economy a bit later on in the review. And we might also test out that 4.1 seconds to 60 time. I think it would be rude not to. Oh, it may be sunny out there, but it's very cold. Anyway, welcome to the interior of the new RS4. It's a stunning place in here, and, and you know. I think most people who know anything about cars know that Audi know how to make a good interior and, and this is no exception. The quality of the materials in here is, is super. These seats are very comfortable. They've also got a really cool um, uh, massage and bolster. So if I just start the car so we can kind of fire up the MMI. So we've got full virtual cockpit which you can either have here on this little kind of pop-up screen. You, you know I'm not a big fan of screens that pop up like that. I'd much rather have that integrated into the dashboard, but I can also have the view in front of me. Um, and, and I really like that, it's a really nice, nice feature. feature. So let's have some of the questions from you guys. And we will start with a question all about the options on this car. If you saw the video I put out asking for uh, questions, one of the things about this car, uh, on the road price for this car is just under £60,000. This car has £20,000 worth of options, so there were clearly lots of questions about which options you would go for and which you wouldn't necessarily go for. Um, so the first question from Skeptic Frog is, can I justify all the extras on this car? Uh, and the real simple answer to that is, no I can't. Um, there are some uh, uh, um, options that I would want, but um, for me that th there are some that there's quite a lot of money spent on this car in terms of extras. That said, when you buy a car for resale value and to make it attractive and to make it stand out when it's a premium car like this, I think you do need to tick the options box as much as possible because prospective buyers, if you want to sell the car on, will often look uh, and, and buy as high a spec a car as possible. I, I certainly would. Next question then from Horsepower Hub was, are there any of the options on this car Although I've just said whether we could justify them or not, that I, I could do without or live without. Well, I reckon I, there are a few actually. 
I'd, I'd certainly not bother with the the top speed restriction lifted to 174 that's 1450 quid um, interestingly the dynamic ride control the sport suspension I didn't necessarily notice that was a, a feature I thought wow I can't live without that and that's 2000 pound um, option um, you've also got things like dynamic steering 950 pounds uh, I'm sure the steering would be fine for most people in most driving conditions um, things like red brake calibers 400 pounds you could probably deal with live without that parking assist you could probably live without that's a thousand pounds so I reckon you could quite happily dent that to uh, 20,000 pounds worth of options by at least sort of five five to seven thousand pounds without really changing the car's feel that much well I've got the options list next question from Chris Sharman if we've done which options could I live without which are the must-have options this is much easier for me uh, number one panoramic glass roof I absolutely have to have that because it just makes the car so much more light and airy um, I'd certainly go for the sports exhaust it's it's not the most loud in your face exhaust but it has a lovely kind of tone to it and it makes the car have a much more special feeling Sadly, it's a £1,250 option, um, and I would also definitely go for the Matrix LED headlamps. We're going to talk about those in the driving section. They're amazing, absolutely brilliant things they are. Um, and then the other things, I, I really like the adaptive cruise control, so I would probably want that. I'd really want the Bang & Olufsen stereo, because I like listening to my music. I'd probably go for the Audi little phone box down here with wireless charging um, and heated front seats. Um, that, that, that's, that's obvious. The wheels, um, I would definitely go for the wheels. They are a £2,000 option and they are the biggest curb risk ever, but they do look stunning. Um, so yeah, there, there are a few things in that list that I would probably have to have. And then the last question about the interior, by far the most popular, this is Christopher Bell, Jason Spencer, uh, Sulia Sugui and Saab Cars all asked about the Alcantara steering wheel and actually we've also got an Alcantara gear knob uh, and and what did I think about it and, and so on now for me that's not for me I like Alcantara I think it looks nice in a car but I wouldn't spec it I think it looks great now it's a new car what it would look like in a couple of years time I'm not sure it is it is a strange feeling I've got Alcantara on my mini steering wheel but only at the top and the bottom and and that's already worn and it doesn't look nearly as nice so I personally wouldn't spec that. I just like a nice leather steering wheel. I love the flat bottom to the steering wheel in the RS4, right. but I wouldn't spec it with Alcantara. Now, I had so many suggestions for this video, well over 100 different questions and things people wanted to know. To try and cram some in, I'm going to do another 60 second mad dash run through some simple questions. So, here we go. Three, two, one. Off we go. So, uh, Rob Van Druen wanted to know, do you sit low enough? Yes, Rob, you can put this seat quite a long way down. However, if you put it too far down, you actually can't see the head-up display. Uh, DJ Tex, does it understeer? Does it have a pointy front? Believe me, I've been driving this car reasonably quickly. I haven't found any understeer yet. If you find understeer in this car on the public road, you're driving too fast. Epic engines, how comfortable is it? Very. These seats are actually very comfortable. Longest drive I've done this week is about three hours and I didn't get a numb bum. Uh, Richard Pickett, can you commute 50 miles per day? Actually, Richard, I've been commuting 40 miles each day this week. No problems whatsoever. Uh, Trevor Silver, he's going to get an RS4 delivered in May and then wants to do a grand tour across Europe to the Black Sea. Is he mad? Absolutely not. You will be fine. It will be brilliant. Francois G, can you get a bike in the back? Yes. Garcia Company, how practical is it as an estate? Very. And then finally, Ice Fox, can you get a dog in the boot? Well, let's find out. So can you get a dog in the boot? <laughs> yeah, you can. It's petrol pooch. Hello, mate. What do you think of the RS4? Hmm? What do you think? So plenty of space in here for a dog. So the next thing we need to start doing is talking about this car out on the road where it should be being driven. <laughs> so, out on the road, what are my driving impressions of this car? Well, I, I've put it through its paces this week. I've had a long commute each day, about 40 miles of some lovely B roads. So really stretched its legs on some nice flowing B roads. 
um, and also done some motorway miles, some nighttime driving. So I've really, that's why I love having cars for an extended period of time, like a week. I can really get to feel them and, and understand them. And I knew I'd like this car because it's clearly so, so similar to one of the cars I drive all the time. But I have properly fallen in love with this car. As a driver's car, it's very, very good. So we start off with the engine. The engine is just a tour de force. It's got so much power, so much grunt, lots of low down torque. Um, it's coupled to one of our mega gearbox. I'm really, really impressed with this gearbox. Interestingly, when I drove the RS7, I wasn't a big fan of the gearbox. It was a little bit hesitant, but this one just doesn't have that hesitation at all. Both upshift and downshift are really sharp. And if you drop the controller over to the left and you go for the manual paddles, and you give it the beans coming out of a corner. It's really quick and really sharp. It will hold onto the gear and hit the rev limiter if you don't change. So I love the gearbox. What I would say though, is it is massively fast. Um, you need to be really careful with this car. If, if you accelerate hard out of a corner, now luckily it's got a head-up display so you can see how fast you're going. You accelerate hard out of a corner, you get to the speed limit unbelievably quickly. And if you carry on accelerating, you get way beyond the speed limit even quicker. So you have to be very careful. It's a proper license loser, this car. I would love to get it on a race circuit or on an unrestricted autobahn just to see what it felt like when you didn't have to stop at the speed limit. But no, driving impressions for me, one of the best all round cars I've driven yet on petrol ped. And, and that's a big thing for me to say, but I knew I would like it, but it's, it's been a real honor to drive this car and a real privilege and, and I love it to bits. Okay, so let's cover off a few of your questions around the driving experience. So reflection car care detailing and a few others actually asked about the fuel economy. Um, now, interestingly, this car's fuel economy obviously depends massively how you drive it. So on most of the journeys I've been driving, and I'll put some screenshots up of the trip computer, on shorter journeys on B roads, you know, I've been getting 23, 24 MPG, which I don't think's too bad because that's a combination of quite hard accelerations and then sometimes you get stuck behind other cars. On a longer journey where you've got some motorway miles and you can sit there in, in cruise control at sort of 70, 80 miles and 70 miles an hour, um, you can get that MPG to start creeping up above about 25, 26. <laughs> But when you really put your foot on it and you go for it, you're going to be looking at very low teens. I actually managed to get 10 mpg this morning, but, but that's to be expected. So not nearly as bad as I thought. So Senna F1 and Ice Fox both asked the same question about the kind of lighting in the car. So let's just talk about these Matrix LED headlights for a start. So first things first, when I set off to Cheltenham this week, I was really lucky actually. I had to go through some fog and it was dark. So I managed to kind of get some shots and a little bit of footage of the Matrix LED headlights working. Basically, if you've never driven a car with these, you put the full beam on and then the car senses what cars are in front of you and cuts out parts of the full beam so that you don't dazzle the car, but tries to keep as much of the full beam as you can possibly get. So you can drive up behind a car and the middle bit of the headlamp isn't on because the car's there, but either side's lighting up either side of the road. It's, it's stunning and an absolute must uh, option on this car. It, it really, really impressed me. And then this car's got some really nice ambient lighting as well. Uh, all the door trims and you've got sort of RS4 on the side sills and Audi Sport underneath the door when you open it up in a little pool light. Really, really smart. Love the lighting in this car. So Grego126 wanted to know what it's like to drive compared with the RS6 and the RS7. Simple answer to that is it feels like a much smaller, nimbler car. It's clearly not got as much power. Lovely bit of road this. Um, you know, this is 450 PS, the, the, the O's two are in the region of sort of 600. However, you don't ever drive an RS4 and think, oh, I wish I had a bit more power because it's got loads. It's got a real turn of speed. 
but I prefer driving it to the RS6 and the RS7 because it's just that little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. You feel you can place it in the road um, just that little bit more accurately. So Brad Vanquish wanted to know what it's like through the tight and twisty bits. There is only one test to answer that question and that is the petrol ped hill climb. Front end on this car is mega. Any of this fabled Audi understeer, it just doesn't look at that, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so safe to say, through the tight and twisty bits is just brilliant. And then on the brakes, down, two, three, get in. And... All right, stellar this car, absolutely stellar. Yeah, so safe to say, Brad, through the tight and twisty bits, it's pretty good. <laughs> I just want this car so badly. So one of the features in this car is auto park. So here I am. Oh, look, there's a car park space. Let's see if we can go into it using auto park. So all you do is you pull forward and you basically pull forward to beyond the space that you want to go in. So I'm going to basically park here. You then select auto park. Uh, you put it in reverse and then you just basically take your foot off the steering wheel, foot off the brake. <laughs> this is just, this is too weird. <laughs> But I'm parked! <laughs> How cool is that? So Rifle Yes, Darren Barsby and Lee Mason 666 all wanted to know what the 0-60 was. To engage launch control in this car, you need to be in dynamic mode. I'm actually in individual, so I've got everything to dynamic except for the source, the suspension, which is in comfort. I hold the traction control button for about five seconds and it fully disengages traction control. Fully push my left foot down on the brake, depress the throttle, it will rev to about two and a half thousand RPM, then I get going. Go. 60. Right, okay. <laughs> now that, that's impressive. Now apparently if you have it in the softer, the comfort suspension mode, it just helps the car squat down a little bit. I did a little bit of research to see what the best way to get the best 0 to 60 time was. Road conditions, perfect. That was impressive. So Blue Meanie wanted to know what the 60 to zero time was. Now this car's just fitted with the standard steel RS brakes, not the ceramics. So let's take it up to 60, hold it at 60, and then slam on the anchors. There's 60, stop. Oh, yes. So two things, well, three things happened there, which are quite impressive. Number one, this car has something called Audi Present. So if anything stops really quickly in front of you, the car notices that and actually brakes autonomously for you and puts a big warning up on the dashboard. Secondly, the indicator started to flash. And thirdly, the seatbelt pretensioner grabbed onto me and kind of pulled me back into the seat. That's how strong the braking was. So that's been a lot of fun driving. So I reckon we head back to the barn and just cover off the last couple of questions that you wanted to know about. So there was only one way really I could finish this film and that is to wheel out my S4 and park it next to the RS4 because there were loads and loads of questions relating to you know, basically boiling down to is an RS4 
worth the extra money. Now, now when we bought this car, I think we paid about 32, 33,000 pounds for this car. It was a year old X demonstrator. And at the time an RS4 was 50,000 pounds. So it was you know, in the best part of 20 grand more. And it's pretty much still the same today. I think you can get the new S4 for about 50,000 pounds. And this starts at 60, stick some options on it. You're looking at 70 or 80,000 pounds. So is it worth the extra 20 grand? And I'll be totally honest with you, for the last four years of ownership of this car, I pretty much thought, no, it's not. This car's so quick, so capable, so similar. I've always thought, why would you spend the extra money? And then I've just spent a week with one and I now know. It's, it's not about the, the numbers on a piece of paper and the power output and the 0 to 60 times. They're all impressive and all better. Although only marginally, this will do 0 to 60 in about five seconds, that does it in about four. It's the little things, it's, the, it's like Dave Brailsford says, in, it's the aggregation of marginal gains. It's all the extra things that this, this is good at. The, the noise, the performance, the feeling, the ride, the steering, it's all that little bit better. When you add all of those things up, it makes it a more special car. You know, this car's great, but I'd never get in it and go for a special Sunday morning drive. I would if I owned one of these. Every time you get in it, it just feels special. And I, I kind of think that's where I want to conclude the video, really. The, the RS4 is, it's a stunning car. Um, another question I got asked was, could, you, could this be your, if you only had one car, could it do everything? And I honestly think it could. It, it's got the practicality to be an everyday car. It, it's a good daily driver. The fuel economy is not as great as you'd get from some cars, for sure, but it's not that different. We get about sort of late 20s, early 30s on this. So you could have it for an everyday car, but it's biblically fast. Stick it on a track, it's going to be phenomenal. So it's almost like a supercar at the same time, and, and I think that's what makes it so special. So pretty much that's my conclusion, and damn, I want one. <laughs> Unfortunately, it gets picked up in, in about an hour's time. It's going to be such a sad thing to see it go. It's been phenomenal to spend the week with this car. And I have to thank Audi UK just massively to give, you know, for giving me the opportunity to, to have such a, a long time with a car. It really helps me understand the car and bring a better review to you guys. So I'll try from now on to get more and more long-term loans on cars. I also have to thank everybody that contributed to uh, the, the collaboration video. I'm sorry I couldn't get everybody's comments in. It just isn't possible in the time, but I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. Anyway, if you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And next to this beautiful RS4, and I still love my S4, um, I will see you on the next film, guys. Anyway, you take care, drive safe.